Mumbai, the city of dreams, the city of hope and struggle. The home of Bollywood and the hotbed of the underworld. In the year 1955, in the choked lanes of a South Mumbai ghetto, Dongri, Daud Ibrahim Kaskar was born. His father a policeman, but Daud's interests were vastly different. After dropping from school, Daud carried out killings for the late Mumbai underworld dawn Karim Lala in his early years. And in no time, the 80s and the early 90s saw Daud become the kingpin of Mumbai's underworld. Straddling a multi-billion dollar vice empire covering prostitution, gambling and drugs. Some say Daud fled to Dubai in 1986 to avoid criminal prosecution, but he continued to remain a key figure in the city's underworld. In control of all such illegal activities, not only betting, but all illegal activities he is in full control because he has got so many people and right from the day he absconded from India in 1985 around that time, since then he has been controlling his illicit activities by staying in Dubai earlier and then later after bomb blast in uh, Pakistan. So he is in full control, he has got his own people and he is um, earning money, a um, lot of money out of that. There are so many politicians available in this country who, uh, who were connected with him and maybe they have continued their uh, relation with them. There are so many bureaucracy people who are also connected. So he has full support from everybody uh, along with his uh, lieutenants. After the 1993 Mumbai bombings, which Daud is said to have organized and financed, he became India's most wanted man. And from here began a journey of no return. In the year 2000, with the breaking out of the infamous match-fixing scandal involving the then superstars Mohammad Asruddin, Ajay Jadeja and Hansi Kronier, did one realize that gambling in cricket had moved well past simple betting into something much more sinister and corrupt called match fixing. 13 years later, police have evidence to suggest that match fixing has turned into an organized crime being carried out by none other than the king of underworld, Daud Ibrahim, understandably for its spectacular monetary gains. Match fixing is well and truly entrenched in today's cricketing world. The IPL Season 6 was in full swing. The nation was revelling in the matches, the glitz and the glamour. But there were men busy working behind the scenes. They had sniffed the clues and were now following the signs. And then the day arrived. 15th of May 2013. Regularly. The after party following the Mumbai Indians versus Rajasthan Royals match ended in jail for three cricketers, tainted with spot fixing allegations. When I addressed the press conference following the uh, you know expose, I did not take any names because you're not very sure that uh, whose voice we had on tape, whose voice you know, we had recorded as having talked to bookies here and uh, directly or indirectly. Uh, but only when it was officially confirmed that it was indeed, uh, you know, Dawood Ibrahim's voice that uh, we came out uh, with a name. My sense is that bulk of it is, bulk of the uh, match fixing or spot fixing um, uh, or manipulations of uh, the outcome of uh, cricket matches uh, is done by the D company. But these three players were just pawns 
and little did they know about the larger game plan. It had been two months since the arrest of Srishant, Anki Chavan and Ajit Chandela. And now the cops were set to name the real mastermind. A 6,000-page charge sheet revealed the fountainhead of the Indian Premier League fixing scandal. Daud Ibrahim, sitting in his living room in Dubai, was single-handedly controlling the game. Daud's base was there in Dubai at that time. So that's one of the reasons Daud became one of the first person to be involved in cricket batting. Initially, I used to go to Dubai. I, I never saw the matches, but I used to be there during these days. There were some other reasons also for going there, but one of the reasons was to study the system. So what I studied there, most of the people were into the so-called batting for the sake of fun. They were not very serious about making money because most of the people are already very rich, like film stars, industrialists, diamond merchants, property um, uh, dealers, big property dealers. The, these are the people who always have been, in a way, connected to the underworld. Maybe that belonged to Daoud or Tota Rajan or somebody else. So where, because these people have had very big stakes involved in their business and most of the transactions were in uh, black money or a hawala needed. From players to bookies to payments, it was all being supervised by the underworld dawn. The stakes were high and Daoud Ibrahim did not want to take any chances. We were monitoring uh, Mumbai underworld when uh, we heard some conversation regarding uh, uh, talking to a cricket player. And that is the time it was, uh, uh, we followed it up and we uh, further, uh, we increased our technical surveillance and finally we were able to uh, find that uh, conspiracy was brewing uh, and uh, some, uh, uh, you know, uh, discussions were uh, taking place in Delhi where a fixer, Bookie, was in touch with a player. And uh, this way we uh, further kept on monitoring and uh, uh, we then could find how the Bookies, fixers, the players were in touch with each other and how they were being controlled by the forces abroad uh, and uh, ensure, ensuring that uh, uh, the discussions uh, or the agreements that has taken place is uh, ensured and is complied with. But the route to track down the Don's involvement was not easy. Fortunately for the cops, they managed to stumble upon evidence by intercepting certain calls from Dubai. Daud Ibrahim's voice intercepted twice during the investigations. Sometime in January, the research analysis wing gave Delhi police eight mobile numbers to be kept under surveillance. Extensive tapping and analysis revealed that Daud is still active. But more importantly, he is now controlling the biggest and the most lucrative business for the underworld. That's spot fixing. In fact, in the charge sheet that Delhi police has filed this week, they have said that Daud Ibrahim and Shota Shakil are the fountainhead of spot fixing and match fixing. Daud is the one who is giving direct orders to bookies based in India. The arrest of key bookie Ramesh Vyas had blown the lid off the devious strategy. It was Vyas who got a call from Daud during the peak of the IPL season 6. During the conversation, Daud threatened him, asking him to be honest to his masters. It was a code, but not difficult to comprehend. Well, we have telephonic conversation, uh, which we have captured and recorded. Uh, and uh, the voice also has matched. Uh, the Daud's voice has also matched. And apart from that, we have got confessional statement from uh, the fixer bookies, which uh, explains how Daud and his henchmen were involved in uh, uh, match fixing and also controlling the betting which uh, takes place in India in various places. The rot ran deep and Daud had his men, his bookies, spread out across the subcontinent. 
Investigations have revealed that bookies who were close to the D company were looking for plays not only in India but also in other countries. In fact, Sunil Bhatia, a prominent bookie in Nagpur, went to Bangladesh and also to Sri Lanka. And this has been confirmed by the ICC's anti-corruption unit in a report that has been submitted to the special cell. Look, Daoud, when he came from here, I was from Mumbai. I was from 1985. He was from Dubai. He was operating from Dubai. You can see that the cricket team was running from the cricket team. He was sitting on the goggles. लगा के वो बैठा था तभी से उसका क्रिकेट बैटिंग में सिंडिकेट है और वो चलाता है ये शरद शेट्टी नाम का जो बंदा था जो मारा गया है छोटा राजन ने दुबई में उसको मारा वो सब ऑपरेट करता था फिक्स करता था ये क्रिकेटर को कितना ओवर खेलना है कितना मारना है पाँच छः मेरे ख्याल से तभी तो पाँच छः क्रिकेटर का नाम आए थे बाद में उनको बैन भी हुआ वो एक्स कैप्टन के बाद तो उन लोग डिसाइड करते थे किसको जिताना है किसको क्या करना है और शरद शेट्टी उसके ऊपर पैसा लगाता था समझो हार गया तो ये छोटा शकील जिससे वो मैक्स के ये बेटिंग लगाया है उसको दम देके उससे पैसा नहीं लेता था तो इन लोग को ही सब जो पैसा मिलता था तो इन लोग को ही मिलता था and even though the IPL matches were being played in India the handlers of the fixing racket were everywhere